Should do it, lad. Our brand new Infini flavor ice cream makers ready for business. Patent pending, of course. Its infrared taste analyzer can sample any flavor and turn it into a delicious ice cream. What do you say, Gromit? Fancy pushing the button on our inaugural batch? Wensleydale cream, anyone? Get it churn, lad. Just in time to be road tested in front of paying customers at the fair this weekend. And all in a good cause, hmm? Miss Flit says it's to raise money to rebuild the dog shelter. The poor pups have been homeless for too long. Imagine if you had no place to call home, sweet kennel, Gromit. Hmm, must be the breeze. Miss Flit says the strays have been making mischief all over town. On Tuesday, Mrs. Gabbley's shop was terrorized by a gang of terriers. No doubt they'll come to heel once they've a proper roof over their heads. I'm sure everyone will give generously at the fair to build them a new home. I can't be the only dog lover in town. Thank you, Nora Gromit, wild dogs, stray scoundrels, manger good-for-nothing mongrels mangling me machine. They must be some of the escapees. Oh, no! Me crank! Me lever! The flavor engraver, the brains of our custom flavor scanner, lad. It's been scrambled. The four-legged fiends! I'm sorry, lad, but this is some serious damage. I suppose it's nothing that can't be fixed. I'll tinker with the flavor engraver if you track down our filched crank and our lifted lever. And this cute one's going to need to be calmed down as well. Mind you, it'll take a month of ice cream sundaes to put things right if I can't patch things up. You've got to get them in order if we're going to have the Infini flavor ready for the fair this weekend. Come on, lad, you're a dog. You can reason with them. All that hard work fouled up by a few rogue whippets. It's really an ingenious idea. A custom flavor technology that makes sure there's an ice cream for everyone. You just take a sample of anything you fancy, insert it into the flavor scanner, and press the churn button. With a combination of infrared scanning and molecular chemistry, the flavor engraver can imbue our ice cream with any flavor imaginable. We're down one crank, one lever, a busted flavor scanner, and left with a broken pile of bolts full of cream. We didn't even get to try our first batch. Oh, dear. I think we're onto something big with this Infini flavor ice cream business. We've got to get her operational again. How's it coming, lad? Make any headway? Let's see. Here's where the crank goes. And here's the spot for the delivery lever which serves the ice cream. Vanished. And here is our scanner, short of one flavor engraver. And look at that fella. Luckily he'll never make a dent in our lead-lined tires, eh, Gromit? Not quite done painting the sign yet, Gromit. That's a nice shade of blue, though, wouldn't you say? 
That sign would be a nice finishing touch if we could get the machine back up and running. Oh, Gromit, this machine might not be completely cream cracker after all. Let's have a shifty. Afraid it's still a bit uh, discombobulated, lad. <laughs> He swiped it again! What's he got there, lad? I think he's helped himself to our valuables. We're going to have to calm that one down if we're ever going to roll this machine out of here. Mr. Wallace, Miss Fit from next door here. For the last 45 minutes I've been trying to read the same page in my book, only to be interrupted by the incessant clutter that seems to be emanating from your cellar. I quite understand that an inventor is entitled to do his inventing in the privacy of his own home, but the banging, popping, creaking and odd explosions really must stop. What's that livestock? Honestly, Wallace, this has always been a respectable street. <clears throat> PC Dibbins here at the police station. We've recently received reports from a Miss Felicity Flit of West Wallaby Street of a possible breach of the peace in the environs of number 62. I need hardly remind you, Mr. Wallace, yet again, that the enclosure of any farm animal or beast of burden within the borough boundaries is strictly prohibited. That includes, but is not restricted to, and I quote, chicken, sheep, goats, pigs, horses, miniature horses, alpacas, and most importantly, cows! Any more blinking complaints from the townspeople and you'll be nicked. Good day! Hey! A grommet! Steady on! You can bake all the pies you want later when the gas has been mended!
Did you let the dogs out? This mangy whippet is is ravaging my roses. Came hurtling out of your master's house with some sort of bone in its mouth. Hmm. Feeding the strays really is the last straw. Now he's gone underground and Lord knows what he's doing to my roots. And where's Wallace when I need him? Are there no real men left in this world to protect a woman's property? Don't just stand there. Do something. You're a dog. Can't you reason with him? The whole town has been plagued by stray dogs, but you can't start handing out bones, Gromit. If you give a dog a bone, you have to expect he'll dig a hole. And when my garden is prime hole digging real estate, you must think twice. I'm not going to be the one to lure this potholing pooch up from underground. Giving wild dogs bones. <laughs> I would expect you to know that it's a surefire way to give a gorgeous garden more holes than Swiss cheese. If you're going to be of any help, you're going to have to find something even more irresistible to the tyke than whatever it is he has in his mouth. What can I do? A poor defenseless woman. I can't go chasing around underground for some potholing pooch. That's a job for the likes of you! Don't look at me! I'm not going near that filthy creature! He might have the mange! I was just about to dig a little home for that one before your friend came running into my garden. Thank heavens the rascal didn't tear up my tulips! I don't know how I'd have coped. That's where the dastardly digger went underground. Look at my petunias, pulverized. Morning, Private! Eddies, Private Eddies! I'm sure by now you've received intelligence about the morale-raising ops this weekend. Should be a jolly old time. Like when Ensa used to come and rouse the troops, reminded the squaddies what they were fighting for. I remember being stationed in Algeria, and the association organized a whole day of fanfare. Unbelievable! There was Fatima the Snake Charmer, the ever-popular Monkey Toss competition, even a couscous eating contest. Which reminds me, 
I expect you to be at the fair when I display my digestive prowess. <laughs> the pie-eating contest, Private. You must have seen the sign-up sheet in town. Nobody will challenge the great major, though. I shall be uncontested. They don't call me Cool Hand Crumb for nothing, you know. Those are my biscuits, Private. And very delicious they are, too. Can't share them with you, though. For optimal nutritional efficiency, today's soldiers must stick to their rations. So, no wiki-wikis for you, I'm afraid. Oh, tremendous flavor. Mmm, I do say, Private, after a life lived in the trenches, it is a pleasure to sit down and enjoy a few handfuls of such decadent biscuits. Came across a case of these irresistible devils in my cellar, and have been eating them ever since, and with a metabolism like mine, I have no intention of stopping either. Oh, tremendous flavor. Oh, the pie-eating contest will be quite a show, Private. Back in the officer's mess, the men would make wagers on how much I could put away, not by the plate, but by the shovel load. <laughs> you should have been there. Mountains of pasta, shepherd's pie stacked to the heavens. Barrels of black pudding, nothing I couldn't put away in those days. Of course, I was much hungrier back then. But the crumb appetite still remains a force to be reckoned with. I told you, Private, you can't have any of my biscuits. It's for the good of the regiment. Mm. Mm. Oh, you can't have just the one. I could eat these mm, all day. <laughs> Delicious, but a bit heavier than you would think for a biscuit. I should still be able to wow the masses of the fair, though. Hello, Gromit lad. How's Mr. Wallace? Have you heard about the fundraiser? I've never been to a proper town fair before. Oh, this should be grand. Hope to be seeing you and Mr. Wallace. Oh, morning, pet. Out for walkies. Certainly a grand day for it. Anything I can do for you? Town's a buzz with the fundraiser this weekend, isn't it? About time somebody did something to build a new dog shelter. Ooh, I've had run-ins with all sorts of strays of late. Terriers, spaniels, mutts, even an Irish wolfhound. Should have seen the size of him when he went for me pork scratchings on top shelf. Sent me tumbling backwards and brought me awning crashing down. Ooh, I gave him what for and no mistake. Ah, uh, you mean you opened your gob, and poor brute took fright. Ooh, mind your business and quit interrupting. This is why you haven't got any friends and spend all day talking to the birds. <laughs> I'm just in need of some intelligent company. Anyway, it's high time town got together to put the shelter back up. Wouldn't you say, Chuck? I'm glad summit is finally being done to get these dogs off the streets. A proper fundraiser. Ooh, I love the fair. Fried treats, all sorts of sweets. I can't get enough. <laughs> That's for certain. Ooh, you. What you got there, Chuck? Pie-eating contest! Well, isn't that festive? Me? 
Oh, I don't know about that. I, I do love the odd meat pie, but a scoffing contest? That wouldn't be ladylike, would it? <laughs> You've trouble enough appearing ladylike without a meat pie in your gob. Oh, do I? Tell that to Postman. He seemed quite taken with me this morning. It's only because he's got an eye defect. Oh, shut up, you curmudgeonly codger. You know what, Chuck? I will sign up for the contest. I think it's a splendid idea. And I plan on winning. In a most ladylike fashion, naturally. Let's see. Oh, just me and the Major, is it? Hmm. He's no match for Winnie Gabberly. There you go, Gromit. I expect you to attend my victory party. Looking forward to this weekend's fair. Should be a riot. And all for a good cause to boot. Be seeing you at the fair. I must say I'm rather excited. versus the Major, eh? Should be a sight to see. Mm, a pie eating contest? I don't think that's for me. The pie eating contest. Nobody's signed up yet to take on the mighty Major Crumb. Pity, I'd love to meet another man. Toe to toe on the field of battle, mano a mano, feasting to the death until the best man wins. Edwina? She thinks she can out-eat the likes of me. Ho, ho, ho! That's a good one, Private. I'd love to see her staring down the barrel of a ketchup bottle. There's just no way she can win. Impossible. She could never. <laughs> These blinking biscuits. I've been munching on them all day. They're going to fill me up. Private! Attention! Get rid of these vile things! I've got to prepare for battle! My guts must be ready for all the pie I can throw at them if I'm going to crush that woman. She's challenged the wrong man! Battle stations! Are you? I hope you've a plan to get your little friend out of my garden. Poogee Woo and Tinky Wee may have their mischievous moments, but they knew better than to rummage in my roses. Oh, what I wouldn't give for a man of action around here. No, thank you. The only thing that's going to make me feel better is to get this dog out of my garden. said, no, thank you. Why don't you try offering them to someone else? I'm in such a state, I've lost my appetite. Oh, fine. Give me the thing. There. Ooh. Mmm. Quite tasty, actually. Now, take care of this dog, would you?
You did it. Thank goodness. You've rid my garden of the nasty little rascal and with little damage. Now be sure it never happens again. I don't want to see any more of your canine companions on my property. Do you understand? Your old toy certainly did the trick, didn't it, lad? Oh my, you used to being so attached to it. Took quite a spell to wean you off it, in fact. Now we can focus on getting this machine up and running. I suppose that lever does look a bit like an old bone, doesn't it? No wonder the crafty canine went and buried it. Give a dog a bone and into the ground it goes. It's their nature. Oh no. Did our fastening nut go missing? It holds the lever in place. It's a critical part of the apparatus, Gromit. This is no good, lad. That was my last number 12. What rotten luck. Hmm? Look at that! He found our nut! Fantastic, Gromit! Eh? Uh, perhaps I was a bit hard on him before. I didn't know the little one had a penchant for tinkering. Oh, he's just afraid. Heavens above, he's a positively petrified pooch. Poor little lad, we ought to call him Twitch. Careful, Gromit. The Infiniflavor motor is volatile without its crank. Any luck with the mischief makers? Fantastic, Gromit! The churn's back on! Well done! Ho ho ho! And there we have it, lad. Uncrossed a few cross wires and our flavor engraver is as good as new. Now we ought to be back in business. Up we go, lads. Nothing can stop our Infini flavor ice cream from taking off now. Hmm? Bit late for the post, eh? Oh, hello there. Uh, can I help you? Oh, good heavens, no. The question is rather, how can I help you? Name's Muzzle. 
Monty Muzzle, philatelist, philosopher, philanthropist, and purveyor of fairground amusement. I hope by now you've heard about Monty Muzzle's Save the Dogs fundraiser fair to be held this weekend. Oh, uh, yes, we have. Uh, Gromit and I were just... Oh, uh... glad to hear it. I was deeply saddened to hear of your recent tragedy, and I'm making it my duty as a dedicated and devoted dog lover to help you all raise the necessary funds to repair your canine shelter. Imagine all those precious animals out on the streets. A tragedy. What a shame for all those dogs. But Gromit and I might have the perfect contribution for the fair. We were just putting the finishing touches on our patent-pending Infiniflavor ice cream machine. Ice cream, you say? Ooh, who doesn't love ice cream? The creamy coldness, the satisfying sweetness, the profit margins. And our, our machine has custom flavor technology. Hmm. Its flavor scanner extracts taste molecules from any sample provided. We're able to make limitless varieties to suit any customer. My, that does sound impressive. Oh, bye, Eck, Mr. Walrus. I know a good money-making opportunity when I smell it. What do you say to this? With my financial firepower and your unique ice cream maker, we could put an Infiniflavor retail outlet on every beachfront from Blackpool to Bognor Regis. The world will be your Knickerbocker glory. Franchising. Do you hear that, lad? We could be ice cream barons. If you bring your invention to the fair and manage to make a hefty contribution for this most needed, um, uh, uh, oh yeah, dog shelter. It's a deal. Gromit and I couldn't be more excited. Oh, our in-house creamery assures us peak freshness. Speaking of the dogs, Gromit and I have come across three little lads who need new lodgings. Well, look at that. Aren't they the most precious things you've ever seen? My charity begins now, and I've got the perfect home for them. Yes, quick-looking devils, too. Well, I won't take up any more of your time, Mr. Willard. Walk is. Come on, you. Your new home awaits. Off they go, lad. Uh, say goodbye. Be seeing you and your contraption at the fair, Mr. Wallace, and uh, be sure to bring your wallet. Roll up! Roll up, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Monty Muzzle's Fundraise Affair. It fair warms my heart to see so many charitable souls here today. So let me warm yours by selling you a handful of tickets, available for a nominal fee, the proceeds of which will put a smile on the face of a homeless and abandoned puppy. And remember, ladies and gentlemen, them tickets is good for every attraction. You can fry your favorite food, take on a chicken in a game of wits, or ride the mighty muzzler. Every penny goes to charity, every ticket, in short, will wag a tail. I say, Gromit, isn't this a thrill and such a noble cause, rebuilding a shelter for your canine companions? Your new chum must have dropped his toy in excitement. I bet the little fella's having a grand day out. Probably never been to a fair before. Hey, that must be the remains of one of the flies that was blowing around this morning. Can't abide litter, so I tore it up and offered it as slips of paper to the punters. Here are some tickets, lad. 
go and find your friends and have some fun. Ho, ho, ho. Have a pie to enter, do you? Give it here, and I'll get to it in due time. Quite the turn out of entries I've got. Bound to find a master of ceremonies in here somewhere. Hey there, you meddling mutt. What are you doing up on this stage? Get down at once. I'm the only one allowed up on stage. The only other person allowed to disport themselves on my stage is the master of ceremonies of the grand pie-eating contest. And somehow I don't think with your limited canine brain you'll be able to create a pie deliciously mouth-watering enough to win the bake-off and receive that honour. So if you don't mind, sling your blinking hook. Me and the master of ceremonies, i.e. not you, big ears. No use sniffing about for a competitive edge. These pies are all absolutely disgusting. Didn't take you for the cheating sort. Willing to do anything to get ahead, are you? You'd cheat a little old lady out of a baking contest just to win your five minutes of fame as this afternoon's master of ceremonies. Then what are you doing, nosing about these entries? Keep to your own entry. But knowing what you filthy creatures are prepared to wolf down, I can't imagine you've much of a discerning palate. <sighs> Strawberry rhubarb with cream. Uh, not a terrible texture. But a horrendous pie. Oh, look, strawberry rhubarb reminds me of me Auntie Mildred. What an horrible old shrew she was, always force-feeding me with her horrid confectionery disasters. Oh, good heavens. What rotten memories. What do we have here? Oh, yes. Apple crisp a la mode, an old standard. Stench alone wants to make me wretch. Of course, me old dad, on the odd occasions he was home, would always demand an apple crisp. It reminds me of the manky old devil's musk. Couldn't get far enough away from him, if you must know. May he rot in peace. Was that kidney pie? Just like the swill they used to feed us during my national service. Bike, those were terrible times. Oh, another type of apple crisp. Haven't anybody got any culinary creativity around here? I want someone to tickle me fancy, not torture me taste buds. Yeah, yeah, was that mince pie? I was forced to swallow this swill before a particularly rough channel crossing. After that stomach churning experience, I swore the stuff would never pass my lips again. Blueberry. Blue a berry. Oh, why not just fill a loaf of bread with mouldy jam and call it a day? That last blueberry I ate was force fed to me by the local bully, Archibald Pennycott, when I was ten years old. And I've sworn them off ever since. What a man! Selfless, heroic, charitable. I've been keeping my tallies on the back of this flyer for hours, Gromit. It's not leaving my sight until I've a grand prize in my hands. 
hundred, fourteen, hundred, fifteen, hundred, sixteen. Hmm. Let's see. Count this row across. Assume that the jar is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. Can't be certain. Hundred and ninety-four, hundred and ninety-five, one hundred and ninety. Oh bother! I've lost count now. <laughs> Hello, Gromit. I'm sorry. I'm just ever so keen to win the grand prize. Normally, I'm very skilled at counting produce in a shop, so I reckon this booth is my best chance of success. I've entered twelve guesses already, and I know it's for charity and all, but these tickets don't come cheap. I'm back to counting, if you don't mind. Sixty-five, sixty-six, sixty-seven. Oh, good heavens! I've lost my train again. There must be an easier way to do this. You're welcome to help, but it's my tickets that are on the line here. Where was I? Oh yes, forty-eight, forty-nine, fifty. Oh, I'm never going to get the proper total. It's hopeless. Are you handy with numbers, Gromit? Care to fancy a guess? Do you? There you are, you coochie coos, you. Ah, the missus says I need more mates, does she? <laughs> well, I've got the birds in sky and bugs on sill to keep me company. You won't find me making up numbers at some flipping fair. Good, because you're not invited. Here, birdie, come to Papa Gabbley. Coo, coo, here, pigeon, over here. Chuck, looks like the fair's in full swing. I'll be popping over later to take part in the big contest. I'll have the major quaking in his boots. I will. Be seeing you later. You having a good time at the fair, at least? Should have been there myself. But that sergeant's got me out on patrol. Not that much doing in town. Still, better get on. I'm on duty. Flipping Nora! Not sure how much more of this I can stand. Mr. Bonilla said that there's even a ride, a proper ride, and here I am stuck on blinking duty all day. Not blooming fair, it's not. <coughs> I'm sorry. Lost me head there for a moment. Forgot I were on duty. Let's get back to work. Still at me post here, and the town is safe and secure. The two pups in the clink haven't been any trouble. Wouldn't mind popping off to the fair for a spell, but someone's got to keep an eye on the shop for our latest inmates. Ah well. Still at me post here. And the town is safe and secure. The two pup. One hundred and twenty, one hundred and twenty-one, one hundred and twenty-two. 
think a little teamwork is against the rules, eh? Yeah, lad. You have a go. That seemed like it could almost be right, Gromit. Cross your toes, lad. These are the last of the tickets. Congratulations. You are the winner of a grand and fantabulous prize. I heck, we did it. Fantastic. We won, Gromit. Congratulations, sir. Very well done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mosul. Quite a bit of brain power it did. So, what's the grand and fantabulous prize then, Mr. Mosul? I must say, I can't wait to see what I've won. Yes, well, um, yeah, just as it's always better to give than receive, um, I say the satisfaction of your triumph, plus our undying gratitude for the charitable donation you've made towards our noble cause, our prizes in and of and... Um, by themselves, wouldn't you say, Mr. Panier? Chuck. Well, they're all very well, but I thought... Prizes that last a lifetime. Up here, and in here. But, but, but what the sign says... Oh, quit bellyaching your big girl's blouse. Oh, um, it's hardly fitting for a gentleman such as yourself. Here, have a blinking bubblegum ball. But... but... Oh, all right. And one for the mutt as well. <sighs> I don't really fancy chewing gum. Take care. That is apple crisp. Another putrid pile of peeled and pruned apples wrapped up in a sickening cinnamon casket of a crust. Who put this evil concoction here? Oh, it was you, wasn't it? The inventor's hound. Think you could win with this, did you? Well, I won't even taste it. My wretched father used to come home night after night, reeking of the stuff, after an evening of apple crisp indulgence. My mother and I both knew he'd been at the pie shop, for he could never get enough of the stuff. Those may very well have been the darkest days of my life, and you've reminded me of them. Be gone, and take this unholy brew with you. Now, where was I with this? Do you fancy a cone, Gromit? Pie and ice cream, two great tastes. Uh, that should work out splendidly. Now, isn't that something? I wonder what it would taste like. The last time we tried to make a copy of a copy, we were up to our eyeballs in foul-tasting fig pudding. But by all means, have a go. Uh, 
Hello. Brought me an ice cream from the fair, did you? Well, that's ever so thoughtful of you. And I'm particularly partial to a spot of dairy ice cream, so I'll take it. Just don't tell the sergeant. Blimey, Charlie. Don't know how to describe this cone. It tastes like ice cream, but at the same time it tastes like, uh, nout. Like some foul attempt at recreating ice cream, but getting a little topsy-turvy. Decided to enter, have you? Oh well, let's have a taste. Is, is this strawberry rhubarb? Hmm. I used to have this aunt with a glass eye who was obsessed with strawberry rhubarb pie. Birthdays, holidays, Fridays, strawberry rhubarb pie. She'd sit and stare while forcing me to eat every last bite, tapping that wretched eyeball with a fingernail. Tap, tap, tap. Ooh. And now look, you've gone and stirred up a horrible memory. This diabolical confection hasn't a chance in hell of winning. Ugh, I don't want any more sweets. One more taste of sugary surfeit and I'm going to be sick as a dog. Now, where was I with this filth? Hello, Gromit. Having a grand day out? That could be a confectionery delight and chewy to boot. I thank you, lad. Not quite a grand prize, but one has to appreciate the simple things in life. Oh, well. Green. Here's one solid citizen who actually cares about the well-being of a public servant. Hmm, that's not half bad. And you can get this at the fair. Curses! It's rotten bad luck having to stand here all day on duty protecting nothing while everyone else is enjoying treats like this.
attention! Over here! What is this when it's at home? Oh, rhubarb with a hint of dirt and diesel. Ugh. Yeah, all right. No audibly offensive odors or colorations. Uh, clearly a savory selection. Uh, let's have a taste. Oh, oh blinking neck. This is kidney pie. Oh, heavens to Betsy, I can see it now. I'm back with the battalion doing basic training, and they're shoveling these petrified pies made of hardened kidneys down our gullets as if our lives depended on it. They're screaming at us to eat before we're sent back out into the rain to dig trenches round the barracks to stop the great flood of 61. And now I'm sitting here feeling it all in my midsection as if it were yesterday. Oh, thanks to you. Mm. A definite loser. Now, where was it? Business is booming, lad. Hmm, looks distinctly crunchy, lad. Still, could be an interesting flavour. Find the right plumbing words. one solid citizen who actually cares about the well-being of a public servant. What flavour's this? It's rather... Uh, crunchy. It's not some kind of health food rubbish, is it? It'd be a crime to hand this out at the fair. That's just offensive, that is. All right, this doesn't look immediately disgusting. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, there, there is uh, something here that isn't immediately foul. A faint hint of a taste of something that sparks, uh, dare I say, a not totally unpleasant memory. It's the unmistakable taste of mushy potato, which, in and of itself, is delicate and unique. Hmm. Yeah, well, it's not quite there yet. So, take it back, and perhaps you can improve. Although, as a mere canine pie maker, I imagine that was no doubt your best attempt. <laughs> An accident, perhaps. 
And also, uh, no cream. No a la mode, even. Uh, clearly not a serious entry, after all. Now, where was I with this filth? Fancy a cone, Gromit? Pie and ice cream, two great tastes. Uh, that should work out splendidly. One solid citizen who actually cares about the well-being of a public servant. What flavour's this? My, my! What an interesting flavour! It's like a, a hot pastry right out of the oven, but, you know, uh, cold. Mmm! Ice cream, two great tastes. Uh, that should work out splendidly.
Hello. Ah, more ice cream. Here's one solid citizen who actually cares about the well-being of a public servant. What flavour's this? I've never had anything quite like this. It's everything I love about a good crisp, but in a cold, creamy package. Completely inedible. Wouldn't give that to me cat. Even if I had one. Mm. This looks a bit different. A familiar, flaky crust. My, my, my. Oh, could it be? Oh. Mm. Oh, yes, this is more like it. What a belter this one is. Oh, a crisp outside with a warm potato inside. Oh, this takes me back to my days as a boy. But, but it, it, it's still missing something. Some key flavour from it past. Now, still, I'll, I'll hold on to your entry as provisional for now. If you think of something to give it that definitive je ne sais what, uh, come back and I'll consider it. Uh, till then, the competition's still open. Don't come back. Hello, Gromit. Having a grand day out? I think that would taste very good, would it, lad? I mean, fish-flavoured ice cream? Who ever heard of such a thing? Unless... You, uh, haven't made a new feline friend, have you, perchance? Oh, well, uh, yes, then. Uh, one fish-flavoured ice cream coming up. Uh, step to it, lad. Your noodle. Hello. Ah, more ice cream. 
Here's one solid citizen who actually cares about the well-being of a public servant. What flavour's this? Ah! Uh, the reckon it's off. Or it's been stored next to rotting shellfish. But it, it, it's still rather sweet. Mmm, it grows on you. Good heavens, I've eaten quite a lot of the cold stuff. How many ice cream cones have you given me? I don't feel so well. Oh. Business is booming, lad. Make whatever you like, Gromit. Ah, a new addition to your shocking previous entry. I have no doubt that you almost certainly cheated, but without actual proof. I'll have to let that pass. Let's see how you did. Why, uh, this is, uh, yes, yes, resplendent. I've never tasted the pie quite like this. A savoury crust, enhanced by a one-of-a-kind flavour, if I am not mistaken, of lightly battered cod. Oh, yes. Your entry triggers deep, unhappy memories. Oh, I can see myself as a slip of a lad behind the counter in a mother's chippy. I'm the happiest lad there's ever been, eating complimentary portions of freshly fried North Sea cod and chips. Stupendous! How you did it, dog, I'll never know. But you've won. Congratulations. You're the first beast to become the master of ceremonies of the pie-eating contest. I'll be meeting you on stage then. Time to get this pie-eating contest underway. Be seeing you on stage. Gather round, ladies and gentlemen, gather round. Our first order of business is to celebrate this fine figure of a dog as winner of the pie baking contest. That's a boy, Chuck. I knew you could do it. Hey! hey. And to honor this achievement, Fido here will preside as master of ceremonies of the pie eating contest to commence shortly. I'm here. The major doesn't stand a chance. Ha! I once ate a kidney pie the size of a Shetland pony, and I had room for dessert and coffee. Your starter's pistol, doggo. And now, I'd just like to say a few words. Where are my blinking notes? Mm, they were up here just a minute ago. Um, yeah, well, um, it's not every day that tragedy strikes a helpless town like this. But I'm most honoured to be here in your moment of need to help you all collect enough funds to rebuild the orphanage. Um, uh, that is, uh, the orphanage for lost dogs. And I'm delighted to say that I haven't seen such an outpouring of charitable giving among fairgoers since, well, since, uh, uh, since uh, uh, the great Lancashire earthquake of, uh, 
Oh, let me see now. Uh, some, uh, yes, some years ago. I don't remember hearing about that. Ah, oh, dreadful it was. Teapots tossed from their cozies. Sheep shaken right out of their fleeces. Most dreadful indeed. So, keep up the good work here today and be sure to spend, spend, spend at our wonderful attractions as it's all in such a very, very good cause. Now, without further ado, uh, Colonel Crumbs and uh, Mrs. Gobbledygook uh, will go head to head in the pie eating contest. Now, Mutt, pull the trigger. Just look at her. Right around that manky muzzle's booth of accomplishments. She's smitten, she is. By him. Disgusting. Makes me so angry, I could blow me top. Ooh, I'm Monty Muzzle. I'm the most charitable, sensitive gentleman there ever was. I'm a blooming hero. Fair. Big pile of wet less, if you ask me. And what do you want, Mutt? Can't you see I'm working here? She wants a sensitive man, does she? Well, that's what Miss Fit will be getting. I'm composing her a poem. Near finished, too, except for the last line. Got the whole thing memorized, even. I just cannot write the ending. Dearest Felicity, your eyes are as deep as the murkiest law. Your teeth are as straight as Blackpool Rock. Your haunches are sturdy. Your bearing is bold. Ah, I've got nothing. Look at me, talking to a dog. Ah, going crazy, you are, McBiscuit. Now, walk you off and let a man work. I've been writing down line after line to try to finish my poem. Luckily, your owner had this useless bit of onion skin where I could gather my thoughts. One stroke of brilliance is all it will take to transform her into a hen's loving honey. They just don't make men the way they used to. Except for Mr. Muzzle, of course. Hello, Gromit. Enjoying the fair? Must be easy to enjoy such simple pleasures when you're a dog. Not knowing the pain of unrequited love. You just wander through life, sniffing and scratching your way to happiness. While I must endure the loneliness of living without a man worthy of my hand. Oh, but then there is Mr. Muzzle, raising all of those funds for our poor, homeless pups. I've never seen such altruism in all my years. He may be of meager means himself, but he's rich in other ways. Oh, and what a handsome partner he'd make. Certainly compared to the rest of the town's buffoons. Are there no real men here worthy of the name? I want someone strong, brilliant and brave to lavish me with praise. For instance, I had my hair done this morning. And did anyone notice? Not one of them. I'm sure Mr. Muzzle would have, had he not been so busy. But what does a woman have to do to attract attention? I don't understand. I'm an attractive, independent woman with a spanking haircut, and Mr. Muzzle has barely noticed me. But then, a man like that, 
who's dedicated his life to the noble cause of helping creatures weaker than himself probably doesn't have time for such trifles as romance. And I don't think any of the other men around here know the first thing about wooing a lady. from the other side. Yeah, create a clairvoyant codfish. Let's see what you have to say. Cravens, what a bunch of rubbish! Let's see if this fortune's got anything useful for my poem. Your hair could be mistaken for pirate's gold. Uh, that's no half bad, that is. I just work. I'm a blinking genius, I am! No need for these rotten lines! I've got a perfect one right here! Hello there, Felicity. Oh, hello, Duncan. You look ravishing today. Why, thank you, Duncan. In fact, I've written you a poem in honour of your astounding beauty. What? You've written a poem? Every last word. Really? Well, let's hear it then. <clears throat> Dearest Felicity, your eyes are as deep as the murkiest loch. Your teeth are as straight as Blackpool Rock. Your haunches are sturdy, your bearing is bold, and your hair could be mistaken for pirate's gold. I, I don't know what to say. Brilliant, eh? Just my hair! I did. Oh, Duncan! Who could have guessed you're so sensitive and attentive to detail? Aye. My rugged Highland handsomeness may fool some, but inside, I'm nothing more than a caring and loving lamb. Come here, my little sugar plum fairy. <sighs> Caring and loving lamb that's been rolling around in the barnyard too long if my nose isn't mistaken. Oh, that's just my unique musk. Let's go down and stare longingly into each other's eyes.
Bye. It's been a busy week. Just one good deed after another. First, I uh, takes in three homeless hounds, then helps the town with do-gooders, cough up the cash for a noble cause. <laughs> yeah. And now I've trapped me a tricksy little trespasser. Now listen here, mutt. I built this fair up from the sweat of me brow and a pile of scrap. And if you think I'm going to let a molly-coddled mongrel chuck a spanner in the works, you don't know Monty Muzzle. Aye, your time on wheel comes soon enough. And being man's best friend, you wouldn't want to stop the ride and disappoint your punters now, would you? But until it's your turn, you can blinking well stay put. Oh, and don't start whining and yelping for help. You'll have my security system to deal with if you don't keep the noise down. What is it? What's going on in here? Up to something in here, are we? Down, mutt! It's not your dinner time yet. Hmm. Seems to have been a false alarm. But I'll be back in here at the drop of a hat if there's any monkey business. What's going on here? What's all the racket about? Oh, another blinking dead dog. The workshire whelp hadn't even been for walkies yet. <laughs> Pity. Ah, oh, get off me, you filthy beast! Oh, That'll be an extra few hours pulling duty for you. No more out of you.
are slowing down already. Muscle, your blinking ride's not fit for service. Blinking engine must have, uh, um, <laughs> died again. Ah, there we go. Hello, Twitch. Uh, Gromit was looking for you. Enjoying the fair? Oh, I see. You'd like to have a go on the ride? Well, I don't know. Where the heck's Gromit? He should be showing you around. No? Well, uh, I suppose I can take a break. Let's go. I don't know if they let dogs on board, Twitch. Steady on. I know it's not fair, Twitch, but we can always ask. E easy there, boy. I've got quite a bit of strength for a little fella. Lincoln Nora. You mean poor Gromit's inside the rye? What happened, lad? Monty Muzzle? Heavens above. Uh, Twitch, you better stay out of sight. I've got to see about getting Mr. Muzzle to shut down his ride. Oh yes, everything seems to be in order here. Nothing to report. Woohoo! That blooming Bobby has been up there for an hour or more and won't get off. He says he's carrying out an inspection. But he won't find anything untoward on any of my rides. Everything's above board here. Oh, uh, uh, of course. And what's that supposed to mean? Oh, uh, nothing. Your rides had a spot of mechanical trouble, I see. Oh, no, no, that, 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 that's nothing. Um, purely cosmetic. Um, the, uh, um, uh, inner mechanics still run like clockwork. Oh. Had to institute a weight limit, though. I uh, don't want any heavy hands bringing things to a halt. No, of course not. Oh, uh, uh, Mr. Muzzle? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Wallace. I uh, hope ice cream sales are going strong. Well, yes, the Infini flavors come into its own today. And uh, splendid, uh, splendid. Uh, and all that money, it's, um, it's been uh, donated? Oh, yes. Uh, for the pups. For the pups? Mr. Wallace, if I can be straight with you for a moment. Of course, please. Uh, I'm afraid our little business arrangement isn't going to work out as I'd hoped. Given the current adverse climate, uh, uh, plus... Uh, New developments, technological advances, a shifting landscape of the ice cream world, etc., etc., etc. I'm not going to be able to help you turn the Infini flavor into a global brand. 
Oh, uh, well, I, I quite understand, uh, Mr. Muzzle, but that's not what I was inquiring about. I was wondering if you'd seen my Gromit. Uh, uh who? Gromit, my dog. Oh, the dog? <laughs> Why would I have seen him? Uh, probably wandered off with a poodle or Pomeranian. You know what dogs are like. Uh, yes. Never mind, then. If you've lost your dog, hire a dog catcher, Mr. Wallace. Don't look to me. One last bite, and another pie is gobbled by Gabberly. Hello, Duncan. Miss Blit. What do you use, Wank Wallace? Well, I, I don't know how to say this, but, uh... Ah, oh, come on! Don't be it! Duncan, let the poor man speak. I think Mr. Muzzle has dognapped Gromit. Dognapped? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. You mean to tell me that old Monty Muzzle, the charitable dog lover and second most sensitive, caring man of the fair, has swiped your mutt? Ha! <laughs> now that's rich. Oh, uh, yes, I know it sounds ridiculous, but... Uh... Really, Wallace? It's not very charitable of you to be spreading rumours like that. Uh, 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 well, uh, never mind then. Ah, uh, so you two are now, uh, um, you two. Uh, an item, uh, as they say. <laughs> That's right, we are. Well, actually, Duncan and I are just getting acquainted. But then, having got acquainted, McBiscuit and Flirt will be a proper item. Well, we'll just see how things go, is what Mr. McBiscuit means. What now? Gonna tell us Mr. Paneer is actually the mastermind behind a gang of money laundering, vegetable smuggling greengrocers? <laughs> Pull the other one. Uh... The contest hasn't ended yet. Why, no, it's a last man <coughs> woman standing competition. Oh, who's winning? <coughs> As if you had to ask, man. <laughs> by my count, the current leader by a thick crust is Mrs. Gavily. Hogwash! Woohoo! Mmm! And I'm relishing every bite! <laughs> I'm just getting warmed up. We'll see about that. Mr. Wallace, would you mind bringing Paneer this slip of paper here when you've a moment? Right, oh. Hmm, looks like you and Mrs. Gabbley are about even in the count. Perhaps, but don't let your eyes deceive you. I've a commanding advantage. How's that, Major Crumb? My fighting spirit. And Mrs. Gabberly finishes yet another pie. Oh. You've fallen a bit behind, eh, Major? Nonsense. Enemy propaganda. Don't believe a word of it. Soon as I've claimed victory, I'll be back on my favorite airborne attraction. Oh, right. So I... The would-be chomping champion continues to shovel pie down his gullet. But the Major seems to have met his match in Vinny, the Wonder Nosher. Oh, you must be getting tired. Poppycock! I've a soldier's belly. Just have to focus, men. Look at these stacks of empty tins. I can't be far behind. Enjoying a bit of the lead, eh, Mrs. Gabberly? Oh, I think I am, but I'm enjoying myself so much, I've lost count. I can't believe you're in the lead. Look at the munching major. Happen, but don't forget the tortoise and the hare, Mr. Wallace. Aren't you feeling full yet, Mrs. Gabberly? Ev 
heavens, no, pet. It's rare that I get to let me hair down at an all-you-can-eat buffet. Uh, quite. This one is to die for. Pity I can't offer you a taste. Your duty is as neglected as an abandoned puppy. Oh, I never abandoned from it. Your hair could be mistaken for pirate's gold. Oh, well, uh, perhaps this one isn't for me. by dawn, and my egg, look at that crust fly. Uh, a note, Mr. Paneer. Your hair could be mistaken for pirate's gold. But, Duncan, isn't that the last line of your poem? The one you wrote specially for me? Why, uh, yes, my dear. Its greatness is such that uh, it's already been quoted. The poem you wrote each and every line of? Why, uh, yes, of course. How odd. And that little pick-me-up comes courtesy of Monte Muzzle's fortune-telling machine, generously shared by Mr. Wallace. A fortune? Wallace? Honeycakes, I can explain. Explain nothing. It's plagiarism, lies, deceit. I'm through with you, Duncan McBiscuit! Felicity, my wee nose country nymph! I wrote all those other lines, especially that one about your haunches! I think not. It's crumb and gabbly now, putting away pies as if they haven't eaten for a week! Excuse me, Paneer. Mrs. Gabbley wanted me to give you this. Ah, must be a message to read out for the fair. <clears throat> Testing, one, two, one, two. All fairgoers are cordially invited to attend Mrs. Vinnie Gabbley's victory celebrations to be held later this evening at the Gabbley residence. Uh, that's everyone including Major Crom, so long as he's... Humbled by defeat and pie fatigue. A scandalous suggestion. You'll regret the day you taunted a crumb. That's quite a few pies you've eaten, Mrs. Gabbley. Could have sworn there was more. Haven't really been keeping count. Just getting stuck in and enjoying myself. Oh, yeah, look at these. Oh, the rest of me finished pies. The rest? What my stomach told me I'd got through more than just these appetizers here. And Major Crumb has just learned that Mrs. Gabberley is in the lead by a most devastating pie margin. Oh, not feeling too tickety-boo right now. I... I think I might have been out by the enemy. And it seems the Major might be giving up, though he's only nine pies behind. Nine? That's it. I capitulate. I surrender. Hoist the white napkin of chronic pie fatigue. Yippee! And down goes the major. Out for the count. And a boy, Mrs. Gabberley. Congratulations! Woohoo! Remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you like pies, Paneer's Purveyors of Peculiar Produce is open daily for all of your baking and pie-eating needs. I can't believe she beat me. I'll never be able to show my face in the officer's mess again. Never mind, Major Crumb. You guzzled gamely. Perhaps you just bit off a bit more than you could chew. Perhaps. 
A man must know his limits. <sighs> the only thing that can lift my spirits now is a spin on that RAF ride, if you'll excuse me. Oh, I must have put on five stone. Too heavy? Balderdash! I was only on her this morning. Oh, just over our limit, I'm afraid, Corporal Crumb. You must have piled on pounds since then. That blinking contest! And I'm a major, don't you know? Aye, a major liability. So, you're banned, for safety's sake. Perhaps go for a jog or summit, and work off some of that extra weight. And remember... Whether you want pakora, pies, puddings, or pomegranates, they're all available at Panier's Peculiar Produce. Just two minutes walk from this fairground. How much pie did you eat, Major? Not enough, clearly. That old granny has a devilish appetite, probably possessed by a parasite or two. Family of tapeworms living inside her, I shouldn't wonder. And now you can't ride your favorite ride. Oh, what a pity. Over the limit, I'm afraid. Bureaucratic nonsense. Never used to fret about namby-pamby weight restrictions in the army. We'd cram 20 men in a truck, three on a bicycle, five in a bunk. But you're only slightly too heavy, Major. Yes, so I'll stand here till I've dropped the weight. With a finely tuned metabolism like mine, I'll burn it off in a few short hours. Let's have a look. Bah! A balloon, always uh, good for a lift. Heavens above, Norbury Blue! Mmm, cheese! With the tiniest little lift, I'd be cleared for takeoff. A balloon, Major Crumb? Who doesn't love a festive balloon? Used to tie the old balloon to our knapsacks when we were in the long grass to distinguish ourselves from the enemy. Uh, perhaps you're ready for the ride now? You might be right. I'm feeling lighter on the feet already. Weight limit passed. Queue up. You'll be next. Smashing! It's about time. Time's up, Constable! Still carrying out the inspection, Major. Wait your turn! I'm here speak. Hello, Wallace. Uh, a note, Mr. Paneer. Your duty? is as neglected as an abandoned puppy. Hmm, that's odd. Stop the ride! That's enough. Suppose I'd better get back to the station. Duty calls. Wahoo! Chuck away! Cabin doors to manual. Ready for takeoff. Blam! Good heaven! Major Crumb's carrying too much excess baggage. The ride's going to burst in seams. We've been hit. Oh, my giddy ants. Oh, my. Those poor dogs were trapped inside of that dreadful machine the entire Gromit. time. Gromit, Are you all right, lad? Where is that monster, Monty Muscle? He was just here a moment ago. Up, up and away. Hi. What are you doing? 
What is that? It's Monty Muscle! Find our money! And Twitch! Arrivederci! Monty Muzzle stock is on the rise! This is no time to jettison the cream, Gromit. We don't do floats. What'll it be, lad? One scoop or two? Oh, good show, Muzzle, old chap. Not exactly what I planned, but a clean escape, nevertheless. A few quid, and one unexpected runt richer. What do you say, boys? Think we can find work for this emaciated mongrel? That's what I thought. Oh, Knickerbocker glory! He's got a head start, lad. We've got to find a way to close the gap. Somebody stop that balloon! The old churning arm had its work cut out with that batch. Whew, things are getting a bit sticky back there. I think it's going to be all chewing gum from here on. Like we've sold out of all our cones. That's good news. Direct hit, lad. Hey, now he's up a gum tree. We'll catch him now. Shed some pounds. I wonder what could have been that heavy. We puncture free lead line tires. Those didn't come cheap, you know. And how are we going to land without any undercarriage? Huh. Knock up my engine, will they? I can still outrun them with the wind at me back. <laughs> hey, hey, they've run out of lift. Sorry, my little twitching bag of bones, but no one's coming to save you now. Ah. Where do you think you're going with that? Eh, hey, fine then. Let go. Escape me, a flea-ridden friend. You're not taking my hard-earned charitable donations. Let go! Hey, easy, easy. You've already been fed today. Stay away! Stay away! Now, listen, chickens. Ah! Let's go, twins! 
Twitch. Lucky grab, Rummit. Let's get out of here. What for? Ah. We're one scoop too many, lad. Oh no, Gromit! Brace for impact! Oh, ah! Gromit! Help, Gromit! Muzzle's mustache has gone flat! Steal from me? Monte Muzzle? That's not how it works, Sunshine! This is all your fault, dog. This balloon's got no lift. I've got to save what I can. Steady, Gromit. Looks dangerous. You could get your paws nipped, or worse. Now look what you've done, you beastly animal. Oi, come here, you. Don't lose that arm, Gromit. Nothing a little glue can't fix. Give that back right now! Gotcha! If you want your master to take you for walkies ever again, you'll be very careful with that. Careful, I said! No! My money! Oh, my beautiful money! Help! We're still falling, lad! Muzzle's moustache is a poor parachute. Heavens above! Quick! We could do with some more air. It should hold us for just long enough. They might have flown too high and suffocated in the atmosphere. Happened to many a bomber in the war. And all to save a poor defenseless puppy. <laughs> Who would have thought Wallace was so selfless and brave? Aye, but more importantly, that blinking fear-grown felon still got her cash. He's due a salt in the mouth and a kick in the head. Honestly, Duncan, the last thing we need is more violence. We need heroes. Look. By Zeus's beard, what on earth is that? It's a giant mustache. Ah, oh, I've seen bigger. You're alive. Uh, yes, and saved by a whisker. Something of a close shave, eh, Gromit? Oh. <laughs> These poor pups won't go homeless after all, Gromit. Me and Mr. Gabley would be thrilled to take them in. No, we wouldn't. Pipe down, you misery guts. Great. Yet another mouth to feed. Three mouths. Oh, no. Anyway, Gromit, feel free to pop by for walkies any time you like. Your friends will always be here. Ooh, that little one's quite the hero. Have to keep him out of trouble from now on. Wallace! Oh, that was a feat of incredible bravery. 
Oh, it was nothing, Miss Flit, really. All in a day's work for Gromit and me. Couldn't let Muzzle run off with our Twitch now, could we? A man like you is one in a million, Wallace. Your courage, your selflessness, your aerial acrobatics. You could have been killed, yet you saved the poor whippets, apprehended the monstrous Monty Muzzle, and saved everyone's fortunes. You're a true hero to the town. Oh, um, well, uh, um, thank you very much, Miss Flit. Mm hmm. Uh, now, if only I could find the piece that... I feel uh... a little awkward asking you this, Wallace, but... I was wondering... With a bit of elbow grease, I'm sure Gromit and I can have this up and running again by Christmas. Wallace, I... I have a proposal for no, you. No, I wonder where this goes. Oh, Wallace! Uh, yes? A proposal and a ring! How... how... Oh, shocking! I beg your pardon, Miss Flint. Oh, and so polite. Now, calm your self, Felicity. Will I, Felicity Flint, marry you, Wallace? What? Now, pull yourself together, Felicity, my girl. You mustn't rush into this. I'm honoured that you would have me as your bride, Wallace. But I must think it over. I shall give you my answer within the week. 